Hey everybody, how y'all are? Today's project's going to be kind of interesting and we'll have a little bit of background to it. Now I don't build rods. If I was going to get a custom rod built, I'd take it to the professionals like uh, Lee Smith. And you can get a hold of Lee Smith over there at ultimatebass.com. Talk to him and he will build you one of the most beautiful rods you have ever seen. Anyway, but I will fix rods. I will turn around and I will put a little bit of line over here on the tip of a bright color. And I do it old style. Back in the days, they used to have this thing. They set it back on the side like this. And you take one of these, this is called a bobbin. And you put it on there and you start it and you wrap it. And as you're turning it, it'll, it'll wind up on there. Well, the only problem is that when you have the butt end on the section of it, and I know you can't see this because I'm hitting it, hiding it, but it walks. So I was constantly chasing my butt when I was doing this. When I got a little bit more space, I kind of do most of my work over here in the workshop. I decided it's time for me to quit chasing my butt. And I made these nice little wrapper stands. They will support a rod. And now, besides the fact that I don't have to chase my butt, I can just sit there and set up just like this and just spin on away. Using the weight of the bobbin and holding it down when I'm, when I'm finishing up and everything, it's just like having an extra hand. It's the best thing I ever did. Now, if I'm involved with one that's a little heavy, it's a little lopsided, it's, it's, a, little, it's a little off maybe, a little off balance, or I'm just throwing it around a little bit, I can turn around and I can clamp them down. So this way they're not slipping anymore. This one supports about a six and a half, oh, almost a seven foot rod. If I had a, if I had a, I would extend this out a little bit. If I put a two before on it and I clamp the two before down and I'd run these on that two before. And then I'd be able to support a seven to, oh, probably about an eight and a half, nine foot rod. And I'd be able to do whatever work I need to be done with it. It's all by hand, nothing fancy. And I don't have any of the custom wrapping stuff on it. But if you just start now, and you want to do it kind of low budget, this was made with one piece, actually it was only like half a piece. This was made with one half of a piece of an old uh, bed slab. into six pieces, four inches long. I used one package, which was, I don't know, three, four bucks, of felt, which you could probably get it, get better felt and a cheaper felt at like a, a, a home store or you know one of those craft stores. And my bottom was kind of expensive, but I've had that for like 200 million years, so we won't, we won't talk into that. We'll talk about this. I used two screws in each one. So, for a total of probably less than ten dollars, you can do a heck of a lot of wrapping. So, uh, why don't you stay tuned and we'll show you how to make them. So I start this project out by setting my stop block up to four inches. I got some one before hardwood and I'm going to cut out six of these four inches long. Okay, so the, the critical part is laying the marks out. We want to run a half, uh, mark down the middle, which would be two inches. And then we want to go three eighths of an inch on either side of that. And that'll locate the upright. Now 
Now we're also going to want to transfer that mark to the other side. We'll get this right here. All of them need to have that center mark. And three of them, plus my, my test piece. Gonna need break. Oh, I my test. Okay, there's the markings for my base. Center, two inches, three eighths of an inch on each side. And what happens is, is that will center upright, just like that. And set them on the side. Now these other ones, all we need to do is do a mark of two inches. And this mark, only has to be the short. Then we're going to take that yeah, should be about one and three quarters, one finger. Come over here and we mark. One and three quarter for the center. Now, you come in. Half in. From the end. On each side. You'll see what we do with them in the near future. I don't do a whole lot in hardwood. <clears throat> and I've got a whole bunch of these Craig one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws with the thinner thread for hardwood. I forgot I use them for this project. And I'm taking a three eighths inch Foster bit and I'm going to counter bore a hole. And I want to make sure that that is deep enough. I don't know how well you can see that. Make sure that that's deep enough so that when this is driven in, it's, it's sunk in pretty deep. And I'm also just lining it up like this and just give it a little consistency to where it's located. It needs to be just a tad deeper. It'll be hidden inside there, so this way there's no way it's going to scratch the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, drill one on each end. When I screw this in, I want this to draw up tight. And I don't want the threads digging into here. So I took a 3 16th inch drill bit and drilled a hole in the center where it lines up so that it'll so that the screw will come in there, will set in there. 
This way, when it's all together, it, the drawing and holding action will actually be pulling it tight from the top. So we'll just go ahead and drill those holes. This is an optional step. Uh, this is going to be the bottom of my V that's going to come down. And I don't want it to be a sharp V. So I'm going to take a 3 8 inch spade bit and I'm going to drill a hole in there. And then I'm going to connect the two lines and I'm going to cut that V out so it's kind of got a rounded bound bottom to it. The size of that is kind of uh, arbitrary also. If you're running larger rods or you want a bigger bottom to it, then you can go with a larger bit. I just thought 3 8 inch would be a pretty good size. And that's the end of the drilling operations. Now we can take a straight edge. I hope you can see this. And we go from the end of that circle over to our mark that we made at the end. And we'll draw a line. What we get, I don't know how well you can see that, is a V that we're going to cut out. So now we're going to cut that V out. This is about the only tool I got that'll do it. So everybody hold their breath, let's see what happens. million more to go. There we have it. A V. We'll probably have to do a little sanding here and there, straighten it out a little bit. Not bad for freehand. Okay, so now I mark my tops. After I mark my tops, I'm going to line this all up. Try to get it kind of square. We'll get it all nice and square and pretty. There we got it. Flush, straight, really nice, pretty. But we're going to have to sand it all down and everything. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you a little trick. Once we have it pre-assembled, take it apart, like such. We've got three of them to make. So right here, next to this hole, I'm going to put a number one. And next to this hole, I'm going to put a number one. So that when it comes time to assemble them, we'll take the two ones and put them together like this. We'll screw them together and they should fit square, nice, and perfect. So let's go do that a couple more times. Alright, now comes the front. I'm going to round over a few edges. Put a little bit of camphor here and there. I'm just going to do it for a hand. The most difficult cut is going to be this one, because that's where these two are going to form together, and I don't want to do that round over where they're connected here. I just want it to stop right there. So I mark the end of it where it would stop, <coughs> just by extending these lines. And then I took some white blue painter's tape and marked where, at the end here, see, so that line up, marked where this bit 
stops on either end. <coughs> when I go through, I'm going to cut it to that point and stop. And uh, may have to cut backwards, which isn't a good thing. And the camera's in, is probably going to be able to catch a really good one. Uh, let's see. As you can see, I was doing a little work with some felt. I bought this felt, this stuff, for this project, think, thinking, not knowing what, what it was, <coughs> I figured I'd just a piece of felt with some backing on it so I can stick it. Well, it's got a board on it, or it's, it's got a real stiff part in it, and that won't go into the bends. So I cut the stiff part on it, I might use that for something, I don't know what. It's still got some feltiness to it. But I've got this here, it's soft, it's still, it's stiff, which will probably work better for this. Alright. Now after you've seen all that, I tried to keep it from being bored, so we sand it down, all of the, all of it, and saving the witness marks, the numbers on them. I got them all kind of shaped up and looking kind of pretty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them together. And I'm going to put a finish on them because the next step is we're going to have to use some contact cement or something like that to glue these on. And we might as well just finish it and seal it all and uh, cement it to that. If you want, you can keep this kind of unfinished so this way the glue will stick a little better. Now it should be a pretty much a piece of cake. We're just all we're doing is lining up the two witness marks with it. Like that. So I'm gonna add a little glue to them to kind of help the screws out. My number. And we're gonna put just a little dab of glue in there. Now to tighten it up, it'll stretch it out. Make it a little bit more permanent bond. This is end grain. Look at that end grain gonna soak that up. Now we kind of line it up. There it is. As you can see, I've got it kind of strong pretty deep. I don't know how well you can see that. That's that what's on there, it's not going to scratch. My intention was that it was going to stop, the round was going to stop here, and this was going to be flat all the way across. Well, my marks, for some reason, I'm, me and my marks didn't work, didn't work out very well, so I ended up not. I ended up overshooting and it didn't look too good. So, I went back and I completely did a round over on them. And then I rounded this over and kind of cur curved it a little bit. And then by hand. Well, at least I looked the same. And so it gives kind of a pedestal -y kind of feel to it. Kind of a molded look. Not moldy, molded. A little rub on shellac mix I make up. It's real thin. I'm going to put a couple more coats on this and I'll leave it sit overnight to make sure that everything's completely cured. And then we'll come in here tomorrow and we'll put on the final, do all the final work on it. I couldn't leave well enough alone. I kept coming out here and everything, and within an hour or two, these guys were completely dry to the touch. So I decided I, I was going to try to felt off camera. And uh, I'm not really happy with the way the felt is, because it's too thick, I can't get it to roll over right. Uh, I think that you probably would be better off with getting uh, just a regular sheet of felt from a craft store. I stuck it on with uh, contact cement, and they're holding, they're holding very well. And they will give a nice soft bearing surface. I took the other sheet that was like, it was hard, it was like almost like a board. It was hard to cut even, like, like old carpet. And I cut them into sizes to fit on the bottom. So this way now they're not going to mar, if you're going to do this on, on the kitchen table, it's not going to mar anything up. It, they set good by themselves, as you can see. So there it is. It was done in a day.
And uh, <coughs> it's now about, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock. Oh, it's 9 o'clock at night. And it's done. It'll just, I'll just leave it set and cure and everything will be all fine and dandy. And uh, next time I need to do some rod work, I'll pull them out and I'll do some wrapping. If you like this project, hit the little like button down below. If uh, you really like it, and you want to see what else this crazy old man is going to make, then go ahead and subscribe, or say, or something. <coughs> and uh, so until next time, y'all have a good evening and a great day tomorrow.